I have this hutch, but we've already worked on the bottom and you've already seen that part. So we're gonna focus on the top today. So these etchings on the glass are not exactly my cup of tea, but the alternatives to replacing either the glass or replacing it with something else that would either block the view to the inside, which would defeat the purpose of a display cabinet, or something like a chicken wire is a little bit too country for me. So I'm going to come up with a design to embrace this etching. My plan is actually to put fabric on the back portion here, back here. So I'm gonna just go to the store with this in mind and try to find something that can marry the two designs and let them kind of decide where this piece goes from there. This hardware had little pin nails in it, so it was a little more difficult than normal to remove, but once I removed it, I set it aside and saved it for later. After cleaning it, I'll be putting it back on the finished piece. To make my job a little easier when I go to paint the inside, I'm going to be removing the back of this because I already know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to be covering it with something separate from paint. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it off so when I go to paint the inside, especially since those two side doors are not doors and they don't open, it's going to make my job a whole lot easier. I'm not going to tell you exactly how long I spent at the fabric store because I went in with no plan and saw a whole lot of fabric and got distracted by a lot of things, but I did find something that I liked in the end. Once I got back with my fabric choice, I draped it over the piece and as I do often, I just sat down and stared at it for a while, coming up with a plan to move forward with. So I know this can says country chic and it was originally the color elegance, but that is now a lie. I have added, not only it had about like this much of the elegance left and I knew that wasn't enough for my project, so I added a similar blue to it along with some springy green color to make this my very own mix. I don't know why, but I really do enjoy mixing up my own colors. It just makes me feel special, maybe, that I'm the only one with the color. Or maybe I'm just cheap and I never want to waste a drop of anything. That's probably more likely. So I'm going to be using my large 2.5 inch zipper brush for the majority of the sides and the trim, just because it gives me a lot of coverage. Now, you may be wondering why I've chosen not to prime this piece. And the reason is it's not real wood, so I'm not going to get any bleed through from the wood itself. And I gave it a really good clean, so I'm hoping that there's no oils or anything on it that's going to try to escape. Time will tell, and we'll decide if that was the right thing to do. But I figured I'd save that step.
I decided to put a coat of primer over the backer board because I already had it out for another project and with the fabric being white I wanted to make sure that none of that dark brown showed through the fabric. And with the second coat completed, I can move on to making the legs. I have this four by four post that I'm going to be cutting down into three inch sections. After my boards are cut, I'm going to be giving them a sanding to kind of round off the harsh edges. And if you're going to try this, let me give you one tip that I learned pretty quickly. Hold on tight. After I had the feet properly sanded down, I gave them two coats of primer followed by two coats of paint and then they were ready. I just had to catch up the rest of the piece. All right, so now it's time to address the top of the hutch. The material up there is that icky cardboardy stuff. And after all, it was supposed to be on top of a hutch and never seen again. But now that it is going to be seen, we're going to dress it up by giving it this planked wood top to replace the old one. I was given two boards a while back by a friend of ours and it is going to be the perfect amount of wood as long as I stagger the two outside pieces. The center board will be solid and then the two outer panels will be staggered and that way all my cuts will work and fit nicely. I'm going to glue one side at a time so that I don't get any bowing. Since I decided not to tape off the windows, I'm going to be scraping the paint off with a razor blade. It's a pretty easy process, it just takes a little bit of time. So you can either spend the time at the front end taping or time at the back end scraping it off. For my board top, I'm using a semi-transparent waterproofing stain and sealer. The reason I'm using this is I found it in the mist tint bin for $2 and I thought I would use it on some project and today is the day I break it out and try it out for the first time. My staple gun hooks up to my air compressor so there is a lot of power going on there and my eyes are very important to me so I'll be wearing these nice safety glasses and keeping my head far away from the stapler as I move forward. It was all going smoothly until a surprise rainstorm fell from the skies. My fabric doesn't reach the complete edge of the backing and that may bother some people but I'm going to just go with it and I'm painting the, up the sides and I'm going to put it all together and see how I feel about it once it's put in its place. I've added feet to many projects and it seems like no two project is exactly alike. The bottom of the piece is really going to determine how you attach the legs. In this case, the bottom is completely flat, so I've added glue to these 4x4 chunks of wood and we're going to let gravity do its thing and the legs will be nice and glued on and then we can secure it even further with a screw straight in from the bottom of the cabinet itself into the leg if we decide it needs a little more shoring up.
and here she is all finished and ready to hold all the pretty things that a future owner could ever want to put in it. Let me know down in the comments what you would display in a little hutch like this. Me, I'd probably not have it because I have toddlers and it would spell disaster. But I can imagine it being cute dressed up in somebody's home. Let me know what you think of the project. I look forward to responding to everybody's comments and I really hope that you enjoyed this piece and that you will subscribe and see us next week for our next project. Until next time, I'm Sarah with our Furniture Flipping Adventure. Goodbye for now.